everybody and welcome to Garden Style. Well, today we're just a few days out from the fall equinox and I am so psyched to start planning up some new fall containers and start freshening them up. So the container I have here today I've actually taken from the store and it's just a common everyday plastic container and I'll explain to you why I'm putting all these plants into this container as it's actually going to be going into a much larger container, a glaze container, which was too heavy for me to bring here or to do in front of the store. So I decided to bring it here to the house and get it planted up for you. I'll explain to you all the different types of plants that I'm going to be putting into it and then I'll show you what we do at the nursery to put a container inside of a container um, and I thought, well, gee, that might be a good idea for you folks at home as well. Uh, may make it easier for you if you have a really large container that's not easily moved. And you just put one inside of the other and then you can change them out. You can pop out the plants in and out whenever you want and it just makes it a lot easier. And we're not filling the entire large container with soil. We're just using something that we can set down inside of it. So looking forward to showing you guys what we do at the nursery in order to accomplish that. And that does two things for us at the nursery. It leaves the larger container unplanted, so if somebody wants to purchase it, they can. And at the same time, it helps dress up our front porch or our front entryway into the nursery and just makes it easier for us to be able to pop things in and out as the seasons change to keep it fresh for our guests when they come into the nursery. So I've already put a very large kind of grassy type plant in here. It's got kind of a burgundy color to it and this is called New Zealand flax and this happens to be the purpura version or purple and New Zealand flax I fell in love with these types of plants years ago as I find they're extremely tough. <laughs> they can put up with drought conditions and they do very well up here in the Northwest. Their zones go down to zone six so they can withstand winters really well and they're evergreen so they don't die back. They just get bigger and bigger as the seasons go on. So this guy is actually considered a baby compared to how large it can really get. These can get up to six feet high and they do have blooms once they have matured enough and they get these long stalks with these feathery type plumes on them when they're mature. I have yet to see any of mine do that yet. I'm not sure how old they need to be in order to create those blooms. But uh, I have some here in my yard that have been here a while, so I'm anxious to see over a couple of seasons what they do and see if they'll bloom for me. But anyway, the main reason I put it here in this container is this is going to be our thriller plant. This is what's going to sit in the background. And you're only going to see this container from the front and maybe the two sides. So I place this plant towards the back of the container, being we're going to be seeing mostly the front. So this will create our thriller in the very back, creating our background. And then I went and got a euphorbia plant, which has this awesome texture to it. And this particular one, they also call it Spurge, but uh, this is a euphorbia ascot rainbow. And I'll put the name right below the plant. Um, I have found in some of my past videos, you guys prefer to see the names as I'm talking about them. So I will oblige you and start putting the names below the plants for you rather than making you wait till the end of the video. So anyway, um, I've always liked euphorbias. This is another really drought tolerant plant. It can put up with dry conditions. It loves full sun as well as the flax. And this is good down to zones, also six, so minus 10 degrees. It's another really tough plant. But the reason I chose this was it has a really pretty variegated leaf to it and the new growth comes out with kind of this auburn orange color on the tips which is fabulous being we're trying to put in a fall container. So that's going to be going in the pot as well and then of course we can't go to fall without putting in some mums, chrysanthemums and this actually helps to pick up a lot of the orangier colors in the euphorbias. See how well they go well together? So we're going to put these in the pots as well and they'll help contrast with the flax in the background. And then, another one of my favorite plants I love to play with, Mexican feather grass. If you guys have been following me for a while, you have seen me build lots of containers with this, as well as putting them out in the garden. 
but I like the feather grass just because it's soft, it's feathery, and just kind of softens the entire planting once I'm done. So you'll see where I'm placing that as well. And then for some more color for fall, real similar to like a sunflower, but this is actually a straw flower in the yellow. And these are considered annuals, but I wanted to put a splash of color in there and he's still got a lot of buds on them, so he's gonna continue to keep blooming. They hold up well in the rain, which is another reason I like these. And uh, this is about as big as they get, but it is perfect for a little splash of color in the center. So just decided to put one of those in there. And then to soften the edges, I'm not going to be putting a long trailing plant into this container. But I did want something that was going to soften the edges. And this is a great way to go. This is called a Carex grass or Japanese sedge. And this is the golden variegated uh, version of it. This is another really tough plant. Uh, go down to zone 5 or minus 20 degrees. But I'm going to be putting that in so it's kind of hanging out over the edges and that'll help soften it. So I brought a couple of these to place in there as well. And of course, no fall container is complete without a little bit of kale to put in there. And this is an ornamental kale and you can see how beautiful the leaves are turning now in, in purple. And these can withstand frost, like frost after frost. These are tough. In fact, I've had these last me all the way until spring until I'm ready to yank them out. But they do very well in cold conditions and of course add a little bit of extra color and texture as their leaves are very frilly on the outsides. So just can't see a fall container complete unless you put in a little kale or a little ornamental cabbage in the middle of it. So there you go. Brief rundown on some of the specimens I'm going to put into this particular container. And I'll zip you through this video. You'll see real quickly how I'm putting all this together. And then I will uh, take all this back to the nursery and put it inside this larger container so you can see what we do. And uh, maybe this will be a good idea for you guys to do at home as well. So, let fall begin. Here we go. All right, you guys, there you go, the finished product. Another fall container complete. So, I'm getting ready to take this down to the nursery and place it into a larger container. You guys can watch us do that so you can kind of get an idea of what it is I'm talking about. And uh, in the future, we'll be doing definitely some more videos regarding some more ideas for fall containers. And later on, we can always pop some of these plants out, replant them somewhere else, and replace them with some small evergreen shrubs in preparation for, ah, I gotta say it, winter. So most of these containers usually last a couple, two, three months, depending on how the frost is in your area and how severe winters get and how early they come along. But here in the Northwest, we are good to go, at least until November, as we start creeping closer to the holidays. So what a great way to freshen up your containers and brighten them up. And if I didn't mention it before, there's several of these that are perennial that will come back the following year. So you can either leave them in your containers or replant them out in the yard somewhere as you freshen up for the holidays. Okay, of course, any questions or comments, you can leave them in the description box down below this video, or you can get a hold of me at gardenstylenw.com on my website or my email at gardenstyleinwest at gmail.com. Hope you guys are having a fabulous fall. I wish you a happy equinox, and we will definitely talk soon. Bye for now. So there's the large container. 
and I'm going to show you what we do on the inside. You can see for the glare. We just took another pot and put it upside down and then we're going to put the other container on top. So here we go.